Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Love Fruit Podcast and today I am joined by Rob Vegan from Sweden, that's Victoria Vesterlund and Victoria has made a great breakthrough with her blog and YouTube channel rawvegan.se and she is a trained raw life educator, a health educator, raw food chef, health and lifestyle therapist, former elite athlete and model and in recent years she's read a lot about nutrition raw foods superfoods and other information and you can follow her on instagram and on youtube and other places rawvegan.se so victoria is there anything more you would like to tell us about yourself as an introduction uh, i think you got a really good introduction about myself so thank you for that uh, I love to create new recipes and I am a robot chef and uh, I have made two paper books and uh, six ebooks also. So uh, I have like over thousands of recipes, seriously, <laughs> if you like see them all. So, um, so yeah, I really love to create new recipes and uh, I'm very passionate about the, the raw food. Uh, yeah, the raw food lifestyle and the flavors and the textures and, uh, and how you can create new things with it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to guess you didn't grow up in a raw food diet. Excuse me? I, I'm going to guess that you did not grow up on a raw food diet growing up in Sweden. Yes, that's true. Uh, I have grown up with uh, like, yeah, regular Swedish kind of classic food, uh, like meatballs, potatoes. I mean, it's like kind of real food. Uh, not so much like fried foods and so on, but it's still like, yeah. It is just it's just not so healthy. So um, yeah, I changed my diet for yeah for about uh, uh, ten years ago or something like that. Yeah. And growing up on that in the normal kind of Swedish diet, did you experience any challenges, any health challenges or problems? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, I had lots of problems uh, when I was younger, especially when I was a teenager. Uh, like a uh, problem with my gut and problem with acne and uh, problem with um, uh, nutrition uh, deficiencies and uh, and also low immunity that have been my like yeah biggest problems also and uh, and then I I worked out a lot so I had lots of injuries and inflammations and uh, yeah I, I really I was really stiff in my body so so yeah that that was it <laughs> And, and and what was it that made you start to look at your diet and lifestyle and start to make changes? Uh, I start to make changes when when I when I start to feel like everything got just worse because I was sick so often and uh, I felt that I, I I have to do something and I have tried different things through the years and uh, the raw food was uh, was the thing that that actually helped and uh, now so about nine years later with <laughs> with eating raw food it's still uh, it still feel very good in my body so uh, so I just keep doing it instead of like trying different things and it doesn't work and yeah this is like this works yeah when when was the first time you started to make a change to your diet uh, oh um, I have actually tried making different changes I mean, in my upper teenager, like seventeen or eighteen, and um, but but I it was like trying different stuff. Like uh, I took away milk, and I I started to eat more soy products instead of uh, other things. And uh, I had like start to experiment a little bit, and uh, I noticed some different here and there, some to the better side and some to the bad side, and uh, and then I tried <laughs> different new things all the time but i couldn't really find something that really worked yeah mm -hmm. and was it a gradual process towards a raw vegan diet or did you kind of find out about that quite early on uh, it was it was kind of a progress i mean um, uh, i started to eat more fruit and vegetables and start to feel better and then the more i ate the better i felt so so uh, so then I just I just continue doing it and uh, um, but I wasn't like hundred percent uh, in the first time I I was like yeah eating something else when I was out and uh, and so on so uh, uh, yeah and and also uh, through the years it was like yeah I start to eat vegetarian 
and then I was vegan with like cheese <laughs> and uh, uh, but I, I never was actually fully vegan before I, I went raw food. I was more like vegan with cheese. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I started to eat raw food. And I still ate some raw cheeses here and there because I really like like goat cheese and so on. And pecorino, and they are actually raw. Uh, but then when I took away the cheeses, uh, I started to feel a clear uh, clarity in my brain and the uh, in my mood and uh, and also in my energy, so so that was really huge. What was your first exposure to <clears throat> a vegan or raw vegan diet? What was the information you came across? Mm, it was on a restaurant actually uh, when I was in a restaurant, uh, a high gourmet restaurant, and um, it it was just I wanted to eat something delicious and. Uh, and yeah, so I, I ordered raw food, a raw food meal, and I really liked it. And because I I have like a, a huge uh, interest for food and uh, and uh, yeah, making food. And uh, the thing that I was the most interested in was actually um, was actually the creativity and the colorful and and all the stuff. So so that made me more interested in raw food because it was so colorful. And you can go so creative with it, and uh, yeah, so that was actually uh, so. I just just started to make more raw food because I really love to make like food and so on. But um, I didn't like the messiness, uh, and uh, yeah, when you're cooking, it's like lots of disgusting dishes and uh, and so on. So so raw food is just so fresh. So uh, yeah, so I felt like okay, this is my way to make food because I can really make beautiful things and use my creativity in it also. So were you always attracted towards the, the making of the food and the food preparation? Yes, the preparation was really interesting. And also the taste, it was so good. So uh, so the, the flavor you can get with raw foods is like, is not close to what you can get with cooked food. Uh, for example, uh, you can use a dehydrator to make cooked food, but it would taste so much more. I actually have a recipe of a raw vegan pizza. Uh, that is a great example because I tried to make this pizza. The recipe is a buckwheat crust uh, with lots of vegetables and then herbs. So uh, I tried to actually bake this in the oven once, once in a while and it tastes like nothing. Yeah. I mean, of course it has some flavor to it, but not uh, close to, uh, to what it actually does if you have it in a dehydrator at 42 degrees. So uh, so that was huge because when as soon as you heat something, the flavor destroys, the nutrients destroyed, and the, and also the color. So uh, so you you want to add more spices, you want to add salt, and and so on. So um, so that is what I noticed with the pizza, for example. That wow, yeah. it tastes fantastic without salt, and you don't need so much like spices and and so on because it's actually really really delicious and usually raw food restaurants serve sort of raw gourmet food quite high fat yeah and a lot of nuts and seeds oil and salt and things like that was that how you started off was that what you started off experimenting with uh yes i did and uh, i felt very good with with eating um um raw gourmet and uh, and and this kind of food uh but it wasn't that my uh, my body completely healed uh, i still have some blo bloatiness in my gut and i also have uh, some uh, type of not acne but my skin wasn't my skin was way better but it wasn't like so good that i wanted to be uh so when it actually got better it was when i did like a melon island uh, uh, for a whole summer and uh, it was not actually a melon island it was more like I worked on a place where I could get free melons so I just ate so much melons and I also read the uh, 80 times and diet so it just felt so good for me so so when I did that it was like my skin just cleared out and uh, my gut problems was just away uh, but then 80 10 10 diet was a little bit extreme uh, it doesn't work here in Sweden I noticed so yeah so a little bit mixed of <laughs> the raw gourmet and 80 10 10 is kind of the style I like and did you 
did you kind of figure it out yourself or were you learning from other people? Uh, I listen a lot of other people, uh, but then I come to the end that the only person I should listen on is myself. Uh, so uh, because that is what actually work when you when you listen on yourself, what you what what you feel good to eat. Uh, so so that's what I did. Uh, and uh, like only eating fruit, only eating sweet fruit. It uh, it doesn't work that well. Uh, but uh, eating uh, like lots of fruit in my diet and still have some nuts and seeds and uh, and raw gourmet stuff that really works. And I think that the most important thing is that you get yeah you get good hydration and you eat fresh food so you don't eat too much dehydrated food. So your base is always like uh, fresh food and uh, uh, yeah in some rich food and um, uh, not food like I'm sitting. Uh, too long and uh, sprouts is really really healthy I've noticed and uh, yeah and seaweeds also I love seaweeds and what would be a typical day for you oh it depends so much on the season actually because um, different season we have um, uh, different food to choose between but uh, I like to to start my day very like juicy so uh, if I have um, uh, cucumber juice or coconut water. Uh, I love the, the coconut water powder. You can get freeze dried, so I, I, I mix that with water. That is fantastic. Or uh, yeah, just drinking lots of water in the morning if I don't have uh, have this or that. <laughs> and uh, and then after that I eat breakfast. And uh, breakfast is is juicy and uh, is fruit. I love to start my day with juicy fruit. And it depends on the season right now. Uh, today, for example, I had a fantastic uh, uh, piece of uh, peel de sapo melon for breakfast, and then I had some persimmons and apples, and um, and I also had some sprouts actually. Sometimes I just grab a sprout in the morning, or <laughs> I have some bee pollen or chlorella or spirulina because I, I feel like eating something that have a little bit more protein than only eating fruit is is very good for me. That keeps me full longer, more satisfied, and more. Um, yeah, I have more power in my body, in my muscles, if I work out. Uh, so, so I usually start with my, my day very low fat uh, and some often actually no fat at all. And then for lunch, uh, I, yeah, it's very different. Sometimes I just like to eat a raw food cake with some vegetables at the side. It sounds weird, but it, I actually feel very good by doing that. And sometimes I eat a, a big salad and uh, sometimes I make a soup. And uh, yeah, different kind of, um, or, or maybe soodles. I love zucchini noodles, if that's in season. And um, and sprouts, of course. And for dinner, I tend to eat a little bit more heavy, some nuts and seeds and uh, or avocado or, or something else. Or yeah, like I, I like to eat burger, pizza, and uh, more, yeah, comforting food. Uh, on your um, journey to your diet, did you make any particular mistakes that you remember? Mm, yeah, I mean, I would say it's a mistake to not listen on yourself so much, listen on other people. Some people say like, you should eat this and you should eat like low fat, you should eat high fat, you should eat uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, of that ingredients and, and so on. Uh, that, is a, that is a mistake I made uh, because that if I listen too much on what experts and, and gurus say uh, I don't yeah I don't listen on myself so much so uh, so that's that is kind of a mistake I think and also when I started this lifestyle I ate too much gourmet stuff and not so much fresh food uh, mm. and not so much fruit and that is also a mistake I think fruit is very important and uh, especially if you work out a lot uh, to get the carbohydrates uh, I ate lots of buckwheat for example to get the carbohydrates because you were said that fruit is bad it's too much sugar so I believed in that and that is not true at all fruit is really really important so when I start to incorporate more fruit in my diet I also felt so much more better because fruit doesn't need so much digestion like grains and and so on that's so uh, yeah I still eat lots of buckwheat of course but but I still uh, don't I still uh, like eating lots of fruit now, so yeah. so yeah. So so I kind of mix. I mean, uh, you, you need sprouts, you need fruit, you need vegetables, 
uh, you need a little bit mix of everything. Uh, so excluding a food group is is really bad. I noticed. How did you find the transition to a raw diet? Did you struggle with uh, cravings for other foods? Uh, I actually don't remember that I have had so much cravings for other foods, um, because um, yeah, I I wasn't like hundred percent raw at the beginning. So if I wanted something, I I, I ate something <laughs> I wanted. But uh, yeah, something sometimes I I kind of like crave uh not cooked food but something that is warm mm -hmm. so uh yeah but but i can yeah i can solve the problem easy by putting it in the dehydrator or sometimes i actually put it on the pot and and you stir it with my my finger so i like to make all the milk for example so i make that in a pot and then i stir it with my finger and when i when i start to like it start to burning a little bit okay i know that i should stop <laughs> and uh, and just drink it were you able to meet other people in Sweden that were on the same path as you? Um, yes, we have some people here. Uh, I know some people that uh, that eat raw food. I don't know so many people that are like 100% raw food, but I know people that are very interested in raw food and, uh, and very interested in health and eat lots of raw food. And uh, yes, yeah, so, so some, some people here and there. Absolutely. Yeah. And were there any potlucks or any events that you could attend? Uh, yes, uh, we have sometimes. Uh, we it, it is actually a little group here in Sweden where we, yeah, where we meet each other and and have potlucks. It was a long time ago now, but but yeah, absolutely, but not so often. Did you ever get to any of the fest the fruit festivals? Uh, yes, I I was in uh, fruit uh, in the fruit festival in in Denmark in Copenhagen. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun, and uh, to meet other people, to eat delicious fruit, and uh, and just have fun. And when did you start sharing this information online and developing an audience, and how did that all start? Uh, I started with my blog, rovegan.se, uh, because uh, my start with this lifestyle was actually to create lots of recipes, because uh, yeah, I am a chef and I, I love to create recipes. So, uh, of course, when I got interested in this, I just created so much raw food stuff and I didn't know what to do with all the recipes. So, so yeah, so I was just, okay, I had to start a blog with it. So, so that's what I did. So I, yeah, I put the recipes on a blog and then sooner Instagram and YouTube got popular. I was a little bit too shy for YouTube, but I did Instagram and, and then I started to make YouTube. I wasn't actually too shy for, for YouTube. It was more that uh, I wasn't sure about my English. And uh, yeah, and I wasn't so good at English actually when I when I started this I said. And uh, yeah, but then but then I ended up with one <laughs> YouTube channel in English and one YouTube channel in Swedish also. And <clears throat> what's inspired you to do that? Uh, I don't remember actually. It was more that I I thought it was very fun and I watched just lots of YouTube videos about this lifestyle and it seemed like the people that was on YouTube, they had lots of fun when they did the, the videos and uh, so I felt like, oh yeah, this would be really fun to make and uh, yeah, I love to be uh, yeah behind and in front of the camera, you know, I, I worked as a model and uh, that is something you do all the time, you are in front of the camera, but this was very different because yeah, you talk about talk about health and raw food is not like you are quiet and modeling or you are you're like um, yeah do different commercials because you are yourself when I am a model I am some someone else so that was a little bit scary to be myself mm -hmm. instead of being like yeah I mean an actor <laughs> so to say yeah yeah so you have uh, written a number of books a lot of recipes you've created could you yes. tell us a little bit about how you do that and how you go about developing your recipes and so on? Uh, yes, uh, my first book, I was like my first paper book. Uh, it was 2018, I think, but I started to make it yeah, a year before that or actually earlier because, yeah, I have created so much recipes. But when I was like, I felt like, OK, I have to put this in a book. I, I wasn't sure how to do it, actually. So, uh, 
uh, yeah, I hear, heard that you can have different publisher, but I didn't know how to search for it really. So, so then I saw, um, uh, yeah, I, I was where you can like order uh, order books. You can make books and then you can order and they, they can print it out. So, <laughs> so I actually did that. I just made the whole book myself. I took all the photograph and I, I did everything on Word and uh, I sent it in and they printed out and I was really happy about it. So I was just, okay, I start to sell this. And then I order like, yeah, uh, many copies of it and, and start to sell it on my website. And then I, I start to contact other companies and see if they want to sell my book also. And yeah, some did and uh, yeah, that was really fun. And then when I made my next book, uh, I wanted to try uh, to go through a publisher and I also wanted to try to have a phot phot photographer. So so that's what I did with my second book, No This Raw Food. And uh, yeah, because it's fun to try yeah, different ways to do the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, so now I try try the both, my own company and then also I have done it through a publisher. And my ebooks uh, that I also have in English, they uh, that was just, yeah, I don't know how I actually started with making ebooks, but it was just so much simpler. So, and I have so much recipes, so I just have to create it and uh, and want to, and I want to share more recipes. Good recipes is meant to share, to be shared, not to like have in my own little <laughs> little notebook. So um, yeah, so I want to spread my recipes, and uh, and ebooks is fantastic uh, way to do it. Yeah, it's kind of it is more fast and and so much easier. And uh, when I create recipes, uh, I don't plan them so much. It's actually come naturally for me. Often all the time, I say I will make lunch or dinner and I open the fridge and see what I have and see what's available uh, outside also and in season. And then I just start to combine different things and I, I am not afraid to combine weird stuff together like tomatoes and chocolates. Okay. <laughs> 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 or um, You also yeah. get some um, banana salads or something or banana salad dressings. Oh yeah, I had that for lunch actually. <laughs> that is one of my favorite food. Uh, that is banana curry with the uh, zucchini noodles. That is so delicious. I have that in. Uh, uh, I have one version in my English ebook, The Spice of Life, uh, of a banana curry, and I also have a, another version of that. So I have two versions. But I actually have more versions of it, but I have another versions of it in my Swedish uh, Swedish book paper book, No Disrow Food. So, so that is like a banana curry sauce that is so delicious. It sounds weird to co uh, combine bananas in salad, yeah. but it's just so delicious. And in Sweden, we are used to have, we are more used to have bananas in savory recipes. Uh, in On pizza, for example, we love to put bananas on pizza. And that sounds really weird. If you go to, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you are not in other countries, they are just, what? Do be Swedish pit, uh, put uh, bananas on yeah. pizza? Yeah. But we like to do it, and pizzerias does it, and then we put curry powder on it. On it, so uh, so I have a recipe of raw vegan pizza also with with bananas and curry powder that you put in the dehydrator also. So the bananas is kind of yeah a little bit baked, uh, <laughs> not baked. Oh, yeah. But yeah, that is really really delicious. So what what are some of the books you've got available? Would you like to speak about some of them? Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, all all my books is on my payhip.com slash rovigance. So I have six ebooks, uh, and uh, uh, the latest book I made was um, uh, about um, Indian food. Uh, I am uh, I have never been in India, but it's, I am I have always been so interested in Indian food. I was lots in England actually, and they have really good restaurants there. I have learned a lot. And uh, one of my biggest interests is actually spices and herbs and uh, and flavors and combine different flavors uh, to get a total new flavor. So, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, uh, I made all the classic uh, food uh, that you eat um, cooked. I made them in the raw vegan versions, like uh, yeah, different tikka masalas and uh, and kofta and uh, and yeah, so much fantastic uh, Indian raw food and, and also the bread, naan bread and the papadam and, and so on. And uh, yeah, and then I have been, I actually was in Italy 
last year. So uh, so that inspired me a little bit to make Italian food also. So I have an Italian food ebook also, together with Chef Ocean. We will start together. And um, yeah, that ebook is also without any tools and uh, like electricity because we didn't have that when we created the recipe book. So you can make raw food without electricity, without like blender, yeah. uh, food processor and dehydrator. So that, uh, that book is actually without all of this stuff. And, uh, and then I was in Mexico uh, last year. And now it's about like this year. Yeah, this year, in the beginning of this year, I was in Mexico. So I got so inspired to make Mexican food. I love Mexican food, like tacos and uh, uh, and mole and uh, yeah and and different stuff. So so uh, I I got like inspired from from everywhere. I, I am very interested in uh, in food from different countries and food cultures, and I try to keep them in my recipes. So you get the traditional flavor, but you get it in a raw vegan way. Yeah. And uh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, you, what what would you say are some of the best tips for people that are starting off on this path? Uh, if you started this, uh, if you want to start to eat raw food, um, I think it's a good tip to go to the store and uh, pick some ripe fruit. Uh, you should never eat unripe fruit. Start with eating ripe fruit and eat more of it and choose your favorite. Try new try new fruit and vegetables so you get a huge variety and uh, and then also uh, try new recipes uh, and um, and don't complicate things too much. Uh, I like to make simple recipes. I also love to make advanced recipes. Uh, you find uh, really simple recipes in my ebooks uh, and and books also. And you can take them to another level and make them more advanced if you want, but it's not necessary. You have a different choice. So uh, yeah, so so look for recipes uh, is uh, highly recommended. And uh, also eat lots of fruit and make sure that you eat enough because raw fruit have lots of volume uh, in it because it's like water, more water and it's fiber and um, and also lots of air in salad, yeah. for example. So, so it's important that you eat, yeah, a big volume. And salads, you can like massage them. That is a really good tip. Uh, massage them with some kind of fat source and some type of uh, acid, uh, acid uh, source like lemon or so. Uh, that makes it easier to digest, and it also makes it like, yeah, more uh, more delicious and uh, nutritious. So. Uh, so you yeah try to make food as delicious as you can and uh, have fun with it and uh, uh, yeah and just choose your favorite and and try different different things don't be afraid to try different combinations and new recipes do you use any supplements uh, supplements uh, you have to um, uh, in order to know what, what your need for supplement is, uh, you should make some kind of test. Uh, I do it. I, I do a test every year, a blood test, a blood, anal uh, a blood analyse. And with that test, I can see if I need a supplement. And these times I have needed a supplement, I take it. And then I, I start to feel better and then I'm fine. So I have through the years trying to create um, um, yeah, a diet where I don't need supplement. So uh, uh, I use like more. So if I compare my diet now to before, I eat more sprouts and I eat more greens, and uh, I eat way more from the nature uh, because uh, the food from nature have more nutrition in it. The the food that uh, grows wild, like berries and and different greens and herbs and so on. Uh, so that has helped me a lot. Uh, to keep this lifestyle without like munching myself with supplements. So um, in my recipes, uh, I actually, yeah, I make sure my, my meals uh, are very nutritional dense and uh, and people actually can live with these recipes and, and be very healthy with these recipes without lots of deficiencies. But of course, deficiencies can come from some something else, uh, not the diet. Because if your gut flora is, in, is unbalanced, or if you eat lots of medicines, or if you stress a lot, sleep too little, 
all this kind of stuff uh, is very like important to see mm -hmm. your lifestyle and and uh, and your health to start with so yeah uh, i can't say that you should take that supplement just because you no. are over again you have to like see what your what your self need is i see yeah thank you yeah and do you see when you look out and listen and hear things about the raw food diet or raw vegan diet and hear other people speaking and maybe look at conversations do you see any what you see as common mistakes people make or uh, maybe harmful or incorrect information that you see out there that you particularly disagree with um yeah often i see uh, that it seems like people are are just following a specific diet like medical medium or 80 to 10 or or whatever is trendy right now i i see that as a mistake uh, because you you lose the ability to listen on yourself and therefore you can actually lose lots of health just by doing that and uh, also uh the mistakes i see uh it's hard to tell because social media don't tell tell you exactly the whole thing what people eat and and what they are doing and and how their lifestyle is in general but but it seems like people tend to eat too much sweet fruit and not enough like non-sweet fruit and vegetables and sprouts and nuts and seeds um to uh, yeah because too much sweet fruit is not is very is, is kind of um unbalancing and you can get like cold uh, you can, I mean, you can freeze a lot and uh, and your blood sugar can be a little bit up and down and uh, uh, you, you don't get get sat, uh, you, you don't get satisfied and and also sweet fruit doesn't have that high nutrition like non-sweet fruit and and vegetables have so um, so it's yeah, so I think that going a little bit more balanced with that uh, is yeah it's something i see that okay it should be better to do that but yeah it's hard to tell okay yeah um what are some of your plans for the future where do you see yourself going with this uh oh that uh, that is a huge question but what i feel now um i don't feel like i need to do any changes i, I really like the way i live now with this lifestyle and uh, with raw food I think that I have found um, a way of eating that is very good for the environment, for for the animals, and uh, for my health. And uh, yeah, because I eat things that are in season, and uh, I t I try to eat as much as possible with uh, yeah with things that grows around me. And uh, yeah, I I feel like having a good balance between between my fruit and vegetables, sprouts, nuts and seeds and, and uh, seaweeds and so on. So in, in future, I will continue doing that. And uh, I always come with new recipes ideas. So <laughs> more books, I mean, um, yeah, people can't get enough recipes because it's always fun to try new things. So, yeah. so I will really do, do more recipe books and, and so on. Excellent, excellent. and. Outside of diet, are there any other practices and things that you see are important for your overall health? Yes, uh, of course. I mean, diet is actually a very small part of health. I see that uh, that the most important thing is that you uh, you are happy in life. You are happy with your uh, relationship, with your job, and uh, and you're not too stressed and uh, and uh, also it's really really important to uh, to move your body and not sit still all the time so i think that actually is more important than the diet uh, that is what i have noticed myself if i have a perfect diet but something of this kind of, of things is is out of balance i don't feel good and uh, also i can feel that my digestion is is worse and uh, yeah i tend to sleep uh, not so much if if I am stressed, for example. So, so yeah, other things in life. I think that is that is also actually uh, we talked about mistake people do, and that is actually a big mistake. I think that people do that they think that diet is like everything, uh, and that is the most important thing. 
and um, they focus too much on diet and not enough on other things and they tend to like think about food all the time life is not about food food is just something we need uh, in order to get energy to do other stuff in life so um, see seeing food as a yeah big thing of life is is kind of a mistake actually because you you miss so much other other things and right yeah and do you think that it's important to develop a particular mindset to be successful in a healthy or raw food diet do you practice any any mindset techniques or visualization or anything like that and affirmations or do you practice any meditation anything like that uh yes i do but it's it's not like uh i i, I like to do meditation and so on but it is not to in order to like keep my diet or so it's more to relax my body and uh and feel calm and uh and uh, yeah, feel feel more like grounded and so on. So yeah, I, I really like meditation. It's it's really powerful. So if people would like to learn more from you, where can they follow and and find you more? Uh, I have an Instagram account, Roviganse, that you can follow. Uh, I upload uh, stories every day and post uh, some here and there. So. Uh, uh, yeah, so if you want to see more about what I eat and and also, uh, yeah, I give lots of tips and and tricks and uh, and and so on uh, with this lifestyle, uh, you should follow me on, on Instagram and also on my YouTube channel, Roviganse, uh, where I, I give you even more. And also uh, I give you like vlogs and so on when I travel. I love to travel. I, I'm really passionate about that. And um, yeah, so you should follow that. And if you are interested in recipes, I have my, my blog, rovegan.se. Uh, it's in Swedish, but actually the measurement in the recipes is in English. So you can get like cups and so on. And then you can put the translate button and you can get the full recipe in English. Yeah, just to read that out for those listening, it's uh, Victoria's Instagram is at rovegan.se. Raw vegan, raw vegan se, so they can find that. Yeah. And then any, any tips for those that might want to start doing Instagram or YouTube? What are some of your um, recommendations for people? It's very hard uh, actually because um, uh, the concurrence right now is uh, is much bigger when I uh, if I compare to when I started. Uh, I could get like thousands of likes on Instagram, but now it's hard to get a few hundreds so that is kind of weird because i have more followers than i have from the beginning but that is just because so many people are doing this right now uh, but i think that uh, it's important to stand out if you want to start a youtube or, or instagram because if you don't stand out uh, yeah if you are like the other raw vegans out there <laughs> or vegans it is very hard to get more to get views and followers you you should have something that is really interesting and um and yeah stand out and and see what what your strongest side is and like having that in your in your profiles is very important and uh, i think uh, i'm not an expert on this actually <laughs> if i was an expert I, I my my channels would be so much bigger because i <laughs> i have that many years but yeah that is marketing and um, and knowing all this uh, like yeah um yeah computer stuff i am that is my like bad side actually wow. well you've so, done really well though i mean you've done really way way better than a lot of others oh thank you i'm glad to hear that <laughs> i am like the person like i create stuff and okay. then i'm not so good at like yeah, yeah marketing them and so on but i yeah. try to do my best and i have learned lots of things through the years also of course so standing out is really important and uh, and also, I think it's kind of important to, uh, yeah, to to have different times that you upload uh, things. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. <laughs> how how have you found raw vegan lifestyle with friends and family in your social life? Um, uh, I think it works really good. Uh, I don't care so much about what other people think, uh, uh and so on. That is something I have learned uh, through the years uh, when I have like. Yeah, uh, modeling and uh, and my jobs uh, that yeah that have been kind of hard. Uh, so 
so I have learned to like stand on myself and yeah uh, so it, it's not a problem for me to eat something else if people around me want to eat meat for example uh, it's more a problem for them because they are like oh what should you eat and I'm just like hey, fine <laughs> I eat, I eat uh, something else and uh, it's not so complicated it's just easy yeah. and my family the I did actually lots of caterings uh, for many years ago and the leftover I gave to them. Uh, so th they got kind of inspired and uh, and they have like, yeah, eating this uh, kind of food, uh, raw food uh, for, yeah, for many years now, actually, just because I, I started this. They got uh, kind of uh, inspired because they saw my success with this diet. But they don't, they are not fully raw vegan, but they are, uh, they are vegan. They eat vegan food. So, nice. so that's fantastic but they eat lots of raw food and uh, yeah and have you managed to uh, inspire anyone to change their diet do you know people that have made changes because of you uh yes i hope uh, i hope so <laughs> but uh, if i if i see my comments uh, it seems like i have inspired lots of people and uh, especially here in sweden with my paper books uh, i really got uh yeah good comments and uh, and people make my recipes and uh, and so on so so yeah that that's fantastic great well it's been great to chat to you today victoria what would be your sort of if we to finish off do you have any particular words of advice or encouragement you'd like to finish with uh, if i have some uh, advice to finish with you said yeah yeah, that's yeah. um uh i don't know um i think that i have got the whole kind of of uh, picture so of it uh my advice like following uh following yourself and and have a goal and uh, have a health goal uh where do you want to be on your health scale and uh, try to see what you need in order to get get at your best yeah thank you very much and for those of you that want to follow Victoria, you can go to Raw Vegan SE, Raw Vegans on Instagram and YouTube and find more of our books online as well. And yes. so thank you everyone for watching and listening. Um, if you want to learn more about the Raw Vegan diet, consider coming along to the UK Fruit Fest, fruitfest.co.uk. You can join our mailing list and you can find out more about the event and you can also learn more about our weekly Fruity Fridays group on a Friday night, fruitfest.co.uk, and you'll find out more information about that. Uh, please feel free to share this uh, on to anyone else. Give us a like or a share, subscribe to the channel or down or the podcast, and we'll see you in another episode of the Love Fruit Podcast. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Victoria.